it's David and Brian from VM Blog, and we're here in San Diego. And we're covering the KubeCon uh, Cloud Native 2019 conference, and here's some of the highlights from the show. We're here at KubeCon 2019 in San Diego, and we're talking with Stack Rocks. Can you tell me a little bit about the company and what you're showing here at KubeCon? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so here at Stack Rocks, uh, we actually recently um, included a set of new features in our product. Um, what we're focusing on in Kubernetes is really the entire application lifecycle from building, deploying, and running Kubernetes at production level. Um, our main focus is around a number of use cases about how do you operationalize Kubernetes, helping teams get it up and running safely, help enabling developers to run safely, and then helping SecOps and de uh, developers and DevSecOps to really be able to run security in a Kubernetes fashion at runtime. Um, and this is where really our uh, kind of array of features include from visibility to vulnerability management, configuration management, all the way to the runtime requirements for security. So fitting into the uh, Kubernetes ecosystem, what problems do you solve for Kubernetes? Yeah. So we see Kubernetes really having kind of three different phases of requirements from problem solving. We see customers who are very early, kind of a little bit in the middle area, and companies who are running very fast. At each one of those areas, we see different use cases. Um, and this is where our platform offers various things at each stage. The main problems we focus on are for customers who are early. We focus on visibility, vulnerability management, and compliance and CIS controls. For customers who are actually deploying applications and workloads, we focus on things like segmentation, networking, configuration management, um, as well as doing a lot of guardrails and best practices in their CI, CD, and image scanning and assurance. Um, and then at runtime, for customers who are much more sophisticated, we focus on things like detection, micro-segmentation, response, forensics, um, and all the things security teams really need to be able to manage their infrastructure at runtime. So for us, it's really about holding hands the customer with our product so they can go from the point of getting Kubernetes into their environment all the way to running it in production. So I understand you had some uh, announcements around the show. Can you maybe tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so just before KubeCon, we announced the release of our 3.0 platform. Our 3.0 platform focuses on two major workflows. Um, one, vulnerability management workflow, which when we think about it, vulnerability management is not just about scanning an image, vulnerabilities. It's really understanding what are my risks, where are those risks deployed, and how do I actually mitigate all these issues? That's one part of it. The other workflow that we included is configuration management. The way we think about Kubernetes is Kubernetes is a cloud operating system or even a mini cloud in itself. So our configuration management is really about being, bringing entire posture management to Kubernetes. Kubernetes has hundreds and hundreds of knobs you can turn, from how do I expose my API server gateway, to how do I ensure things are running in least privileges, to how do I ensure, for example, I'm not introducing images or applications into productions that are risky. So for us, it's about configuring all those knobs for you, so you can just focus on running fast and building versus thinking about how do I configure this entire stack for myself. And is there a demo that maybe we could take a look at? Absolutely. So today we're going to show you three specific functionalities rather than doing our standard 45 minute deep dive. The main areas we're going to focus on today is showing you how we think about networking, segmentation, and firewalling, leveraging native Kubernetes controls. So not injecting third party tools in your infrastructure, not shimming ourselves, but leveraging the infrastructure itself. Next, we're going to think about uh, vulnerability management. We'll touch on that. Um, last, we're going to look at configuration management, which is really how do you manage all these knobs and controls as a posture for Kubernetes. Obviously, there's a lot of other components to our product, but those are the three areas we're going to focus on today. Okay, great. All right, so let's jump in. So what you're seeing here right now is the high-level dashboard where it shows you all the components across our environment from various clusters, from visibility to nodes to deployments, and you can kind of see the best practices, uh, networking, DevOps best practices, package management, privileges, security, root, vulnerabilities. These are all categories we care about. But let's jump in. First of all, let's talk about networking. If we jump into networking, you can see that, first of all, we visualize all your infrastructure. 
Next, what we do is, is we use all the native Kubernetes um, constructs. So we show you the namespaces, we show you the communications between these namespaces, um, and you can zoom in and you can actually see the components within these namespaces and drill into each one and see the asset information as part of that. And what Stackrocks can do for you is, is that you can select time periods, but Stackrocks can then generate, simulate, test, and enforce network policies, segmentation, and firewall policies automatically for your infrastructure. Either be it via shared through code with your existing process, or applied directly through this particular uh, dashboard. Um, so this is a very powerful way to leverage native Kubernetes and service meshes like Istio and Envoy to implement everything from layer three through layer seven firewalling and segmentation. Next, we're gonna look at vulnerability management. Vulnerability management is really understanding fundamentally what are the vulnerabilities across my infrastructure I care about. So you might wanna see these vulnerabilities based on severity on deployments, namespaces, images, or clusters. Let's look at clusters because we typically care about production. And here, you can say, okay, what are the top risky images I care about? What are the most common vulnerabilities in my environment? What are the recently discovered vulnerabilities? The policies that are being violated based on vulnerabilities, and as an industry first, we're the only company that gives you a deep visibility into Kubernetes risks and Kubernetes vulnerabilities themselves, as well as deployments with severe vulnerability issues. And each one of these you can drill down into. So if you wanted to see Kubernetes related vulnerabilities and issues, we show you things related to production. From there, you can drill into production and actually see everything relevant to my production environment as far as vulnerabilities and risks are concerned. From namespaces, deployment policies, to everything and sliced and diced based on policies that are being violated. And last, we'll kind of look at configuration management. So as I mentioned, configuration management is about how do you bring posture management, configuration, best practices, and hardening to Kubernetes itself. So you can slice and dice this different ways. Policies that are being violated in my infrastructure, and you can parse through these. Let's say I only care about a particular cluster. So let's say I only care about production, for example. And then you can look and say, I want to pivot off this. So if I care about a privileged container, what deployments have privileged containers? I see my visa processor has a privileged container. From here, I can jump into my visa processor and see all the potential configurations that are misconfigured or risky in this particular process. Now, another way to go about it is, is as much as we care about configurations, we also care about users, accounts, and roles. So let's take a look at role-based access. We can understand what clusters are running. Let's say we want to look at production. We want to understand where there's no users or groups, and we can do deeper views into this particular area and figure out all the permissions this particular role actually has. So this is a quick overview of networking, vulnerability management, and configuration management, which are really the enhancements we saw in our 3.0 release that came out right before KubeCon. And where can people go if they want to find out more information about Stackrocks and uh, th the 3.0 product you just showed? Yeah, so we encourage customers and users to go to stackrocks.com. We have a free trial. Customers can run for two weeks, get best practices, benchmarks, compliance, hardening, um, and use this because it takes our product takes roughly 10 to 15 minutes to build as a Kube app itself. So we run very natively, and on our website, customers can find all this information, including an array of technical blogs written by our engineers. Great. Well, thanks for taking the time to speak with VMblog. Thank you very much for your time.